Hey all you nerds, Gabe, aka Froopy Art here, and in the last episode, you tracked down some missing components and restored power to the abandoned island. Now, it's time to get back to Mal and see what can be done about these escaped hybrids. Oh good, you're back. Nice job getting the power back up and running. Now, as far as I can tell, it looks like there is one thing about these escaped hybrids that may help us track them down. Apparently, they are drawn to some mysterious material called prismatic amber. Fancy name, isn't it? I don't seem to have any information on what it is, but there is a quarry off to the east that has a deposit. I figure, if we're lucky, we can catch the two Pokemon there. You ready? The two of you heal up your Pokemon, grab whatever healing items you can find, and begin trekking east. After immediately leaving the lab, you bump into the evolution of one of the lab's experiments. You remember that cute little Fangic by Mimi Baruch Gallardo, right? Well, it's about to get a whole lot bigger. Again, the primary inspiration here are all of the transitional birds with teeth in their beaks. But what makes this so good is just how wonderfully messed up it looks. There is certainly a splash of like Moa Moa in there, which I appreciate. And of course, it is 100% Big Bird. And here's the thing, I absolutely love the Muppets and the Sesame Street crew, so this was a big win for me. Um, and again, it's so messed up. Just look at it. It feels... Like a big bird, but also like it's got mascot horror. It's just such a great design. Okay, let's go ahead and learn all about Bibikeith, the big bird Pokemon. This massive avian creature has finally gotten control of its anger and is a trusted friend. While it is able to use the razor sharp beak atop its head to cut through the thickest of tree trunks with ease, it is now able to control the instinct to do so. Bibikeith make trusted partner Pokemon and are surprisingly fond of working with baby Pokemon and young children. And even with that, its ability remains intimidate because I, look at it, look at it. But are you like me? Would you have no choice but to put one of these on your team or is it just too strange for you? Uh, well, as you progress, the Pokemon seem to be getting even stronger and Heading off to the east, there is one that seems to be intentionally blocking your path. Oh yes, time for a great big barrier of a Pokemon from Gladiator Gigan. I'll link to their Instagram down below. Now, they got so many brownie points for basing their design on a cryptid, as I love everything to do with cryptids. Specifically, this is a Mokele Mbembe, a cryptid that is thought to be a aggressive sauropod that resides in the Congo. They also sprinkled in some Caprasuchus, a prehistoric crocodilian, since the whole Mokele Mbembe attacking anyone that gets in the water thing, that's often blamed on crocodiles. So this is super well thought out. It's a cryptid, which is fun. Uh, so let's check out the decks for Berry Bembe, the river barrier Pokemon. Their solid metal bodies formidable tusked bite, and stubborn personalities make them nearly impossible to move. Berry Bembe are notoriously known for their territorial behavior, often blocking the flow of rivers to prevent the growth of foliage in the territories of rival clans. Rumors claim that a handful of Berry Bembe escaped extinction and still reside in the jungles of a foreign region. And its ability, even though it's not a water type, is water absorb. Uh, so that means it will be healed by water type moves. Now, this specific Berry Bembe seems absolutely crazed. It appears to be both confused and poisoned. And seeing a steel type that is poisoned is just extremely strange. You end up catching it if for no other reason than to heal its conditions. But it certainly was tough to get past. Luckily, the next Pokemon you discover seems to be pretty weak. 
Yep, we got something just stinking fun from Jam Man. Now, it's really nice to get animals that went extinct all along the spectrum of geological time. It's just, that's fantastic. So, something as recent as the passenger pigeon is amazing. All right. It is just so cute. And it has the flying and ice typing. Uh, this typing, all right, it may not make a ton of sense right this second, but I promise you that it is really well justified. Okay, let's say hello to the pitiful little Phrygian, the cold bird Pokemon. These timid avian specimens are quite the little wimps. Phrygian run away from even the slightest sign of danger. They love the cold and snow and prefer to live in high secluded mountain ranges. Though weak, they make loyal companions and enjoy flying messages between people they trust. And its ability is flocking, which we'll get to here in a second. You honestly feel a little bad for this cutie and decide that it would be best to catch it. But as soon as you enter battle, something strange happens. A bunch of other Phrygian flock in out of nowhere and join together. Yep, just like Wishy Washy from the Alola region, we have a bunch of individuals coming together to approximate the appearance of a much larger animal. And this is where the flying and ice typing comes in. So we know that there were flocks of passenger pigeons so massive and dense that they could literally cast sprawling shadows across the land. Uh, so Jam Man was clever and extended that. So it's not only casting these dark shadows, but they're also cooling the land. So there's our ice type. I love that, it's so, it's so good. So let's check out Phrygian's flock form. Now when Phrygian gather in their flock, they become a force to be reckoned with. They are ferocious and can easily hurt anything that may have picked on them when they were alone. A Phrygian flock is so large that they cover the sky, bringing darkness and freezing temperatures. And yep, there's that ability, flocking. So. They'll change into their flocking form as long as they're above 25% HP and, you know, they have to be a high enough level. You are kind of getting your butt kicked on this island with all of these tough Pokemon, but Mal is able to heal up your Pokemon a tiny bit here and there. But this really is just a grueling journey and you're both feeling pretty worn out. Eventually, you pull the vines off of a nearby sign and see... The area ahead is the Prismatic Amber Quarry. The hybrid Pokemon have hopefully been drawn here, but they aren't the only Pokemon here. All right, we met Gibster's tiny little Lyzucus and feral Lyzogorg, but now this line gets to become something completely enlightened. The entire line is based on the advancement of mammals towards human intelligence and Gipster pulled together a design that accentuates the upright posture, huge brain, and general anatomy of a human. I simplified a bit of the detail and also sprinkled in some mind flayer inspiration since, I mean, I love me some Dungeons and Dragons influences, uh, and we end up with a pretty awesome design. This is Lysapian, the advanced Pokemon. In extremely rare instances, Lysogorg are able to evolve into this immensely intelligent species. Researchers are still unsure how such a massive advancement in intellect can be made by a Pokemon. Lysapian have been recorded using their telepathic abilities to communicate directly with humans, but it seems that they prefer to keep their abilities a secret from most and its ability actually gets to remain Moxie. This individual that you've run across seems pretty upset. It's poisoned also, but that doesn't actually seem to be what is freaking it out. What could be in this area that could be frightening a Lysapian? You spot a large Pokemon peek around the corner and you rush over to get a better look. We're getting a ridiculously big bug from Lizardfish. Their jumping off point was the unbelievably big Brontoscorpio, but we're having some fun with the name and morphing it into a scorpion that's kind of turned into a sauropod, you know, with Bronto in its name and all. 
So you can think of this kind of like a dinosaur or a dragon mimic. It's just so large that it's convergently evolved a similar body plan. Okay, let's go ahead and meet this big, big friend. Here is Scorpronto, the lost stinger Pokemon. This Titan is by far the largest bug type Pokemon ever recorded. Scientists doubted its size based on the partial remains, but this colossal bug rivals even the largest dragons. They are very kind and travel in large groups that actively help one another and anyone in need. And its ability is Swarm and that powers up bug type moves in a pinch. Now this big sweetheart is being uncharacteristically aggressive and you can tell that it's actually been confused. You do your best to calm it and continue exploring. In a pool of nearly frozen water, you see another new Pokemon nervously scanning its surroundings. All right, what we've got here is one of the coolest designs from Paleon Reel. So it is based on the great big Kulusukis, an amphibian that lived quite close to the South Pole, and that's where we're getting the ice typing from. And since a good number of amphibians use electroreception to detect prey in the murky waters, he also added the electric type here too. But what elevates the design is that he didn't just stop there, all right? Instead, he used the energetic electric and cool ice types to craft a personality. And that's how we get this super chill DJ. Now I did tweak the tail a little bit so that he can DJ scratch on his electrical patterns of his tail. Um, and with that, we ended up with Kula Scepter, the wavelength Pokemon. This amphibian actually prefers relaxing in frigid bodies of water. Kula Scepter have a very finely tuned set of electroreceptors, allowing them to scan their surroundings even in complete darkness. They are supportive of their friends in and out of battle. Based on their genetics, they seem to possibly be an ancestor to the Seismitoad and Toxtricity lines. And because of that, their ability is Punk Rock, which boosts the power of sound type moves and kind of gives them a little bit of a buffer to them as well. This specific specimen is also poisoned and confused. I mean, you have no choice but to catch it and heal its injuries. It smiles its big goofy smile at you, but it still seems worried about something in the surrounding area. All of your Pokemon are quite exhausted, but Mal can't help themselves from examining the bits of prismatic amber sticking out of a rock face nearby. Whoa, look at this stuff. It's mesmerizing, isn't it? And you can feel the sort of power emanating from it. Here, let's each take a piece. Mal struggles a bit before prying two shards of prismatic amber loose and hands one to you. Your Pokemon are transfixed by its iridescent glimmer. You're not certain exactly what it does, but it must be some sort of held item in battle as your Pokemon are desperate to interact with it. You pick a member of your team to hold it and continue searching the quarry. Look over here. It seems that we're not the only ones collecting prismatic amber. These claw marks are fresh. Perhaps our missing hybrids have been collecting shards as well. But that means that they're around here somewhere. Almost on cue, you hear rustling overhead. Standing atop a rocky outcropping are two menacing silhouettes, which do not seem happy to see you. All right, the first of the two hybrids comes from Carno13, whose Instagram I'll link down below. This is, of course, based off of the Scorpius Rex from Camp Cretaceous. If you are not familiar with the Scorpius Rex, you should go watch that show. It's pretty fun, especially the season that spotlights this baddie. Now, I'm digging the overall color palette, especially the gradients on the poisonous quills, but I did tweak the proportions just a little bit because for me at least, Part of what makes the Scorpius Rex so fun is just how intentionally haphazard and ugly it looks. So it needed just a bit more ugle. And here is our first new legendary hybrid, Venorex, the experiment Pokemon. 
This unstable hybrid was created during the initial experiments of the Palean region. The toxins present in a Venerex quill can take down a whale lord in a minute. Its violent behavior and incredibly potent toxins forced researchers to cryogenically freeze it in order to protect the Palean region's species and environments from its poisonous effects. And its ability is corrosion, meaning that it can poison any Pokemon, including steel and poison types. It snaps its jagged maw and swooshes its spiked tail before looking over to its fellow hybrid. Yes, our second hybrid comes from Topaz. You can find her links down below. Now, she has some clear inspiration from the Indoraptor in Fallen Kingdom. Uh, this is also great because while both of the hybrids are aggressive and mean, we're able to get two distinct personalities. Where Venorex is squat, brutish, ugly, and more masculine, this design gets to be upright, exceedingly intelligent, graceful, and more feminine. On top of that, their typings actually cover for one another extremely well, and you end up with a pretty formidable pair. Let's meet our second hybrid here is Cyndorex, the experiment Pokemon. This unstable hybrid was created during the initial experiments in the Palean region. Cyndorex has an overpowering psychic aura that bends even the strongest Pokemon to its will. Its malicious behavior and incredible mind control forced researchers to cryogenically freeze it in order to protect the Palean region from its tyrannical reign. And its ability is Infiltrator. That means that it will pass right through any opponent's barriers and strikes. The two monstrosities roar, a direct challenge at you. You see psychic waves emanating from Cyndorex as Venorex fires poisonous quills into the ground around you. A wave of mind-controlled Pokemon converge on you from all directions. You and Mal have quite the gauntlet ahead of you, six powerful Pokemon to deal with. Though confused, the mechanics of this battle minimize the chances that they will ever hurt themselves. On top of that, there are toxic spikes in place already. By the time you get through those six Pokemon, most of Mal's team has fainted. And unfortunately, the two hybrids now leap down and challenge you. This would easily be the most difficult battle of Pokemon Amber. Two extremely high-leveled legendaries actively synergizing and working together to decimate your already weakened team. If that wasn't enough, they each have a Prismatic Amber. When they drop below 50%, that Prismatic Amber boosts their highest stat by two stages. So it's a pretty challenging battle. Luckily, the two of you are able to just barely knock them out and catch the vicious hybrid Pokemon. Yes, we did it. Phew, I was getting pretty worried there. Well, I think I can safely say that I need to take a break from exploring abandoned labs and accidentally letting loose rampaging abominations. Now, how about we introduce some of these new species to everyone on the mainland? After saving the day, the new species found on Site B are scattered across the Palean region mainland, and even find their way into the Battle Hotel, which you would have a blast dominating with your new Prismatic Amber. You continue to help the professor with their research, always on the lookout for new fossils, and every day in the Palean region continues being a prehistoric adventure. And with that, you have completed the Pokemon Amber DLC. A monumental thank you to all of the artists who submitted their artwork to the contest. I was initially only planning to pick 18 designs, but there were so many that I had to expand to 29 instead. And even then, there were so many amazing submissions that I wasn't able to fit in. All right, the biggest thank you to you for following the series. And if you were sad to see this region come to a close, it's okay, because I will see you very soon for the start of a brand new region. All right, later nerds. <laughs>